Slurp, slurp, slurp. Grinch, grinch, grinch. Suck, suck, suck. You know what that is? That is the sound of somebody using dark psychological tactics on you to suck your soul dry. Get them out of my head. The enemy vampire and just gaslight you. You think you're Lego. You think you're crazy. And uh, I want to talk about that today because I'm seeing so much of it in the Amber Heard Johnny Depp video. I don't even want to talk about this. I'm so over this. But I see it happening to some of the most successful people in life. So for sure as hell, this can happen to you. So I'm gonna talk about today in today's video. By the way, I'm out here in Medellin, Colombia. I'm in El Poblado. If you wanna know how to travel like this, do videos, and have a lot of fun, and just be out here in the crowd, what I recommend you do is learn how to be a coach. That's what allows me to do this, okay? I have a program that allows you to have a freedom lifestyle, travel anywhere you want, do what you want, and just be an adventurous person working from your laptop, helping impact the world. It's called Influence Mastery for Coaches, so I'll put a link for it right down here. It's coming very, very soon. You can get on the interest list, just send me a quick WhatsApp message, You're like, yo, Madison, what's up? Influence Mastery, tell me about it, and I'll answer all your questions, and I'll keep you engaged when it comes up, all right? So let's get into this gaslighting situation. So some people might not even know that they are in dark, psychological, manipulative, evil relationships, people. This could be friends or this could be intimate relationships. You might not even know that you're in it, bro. And that's the worst thing. The second thing is you're in it and maybe you're afraid to escape because you feel trapped. The person has sucked your self-esteem dry and they've used tools on you to make you feel like you're not worth it. So that's why it's so important you either address this early on and you see the red flags that happen to you or if you cannot catch it early enough, you identify the signs and the red flags that you're in it and you think of an escape plan to get out of it. It is the single worst thing that can happen to your life. Actually, no, the single worst thing is you get physically sick. That's, that's the first worst thing. The second worst thing is you surround yourself with the wrong people in life. Friends or intimate relationships or even family that suck you dry, your soul, they make you feel like you're crazy, they gaslight you, and then they take everything from you. And the third worst thing for a guy is uh, not having work, because a guy can feel like he's like not productive in society and the world if he doesn't have work. So these are the three worst things that can happen for you, and this is number two on the list, okay? And now we see this in the Johnny Depp situation. He's in court, what are we hearing? Oh, uh, she pooped on my bed. She the little, little poops on my bed. And it wasn't the dog. I can tell the dog species. I pick it up every day. She pooped on her bed, my bed. Why would she do that? It was a photograph of the bed. It was human fecal matter. Uh, and she just tried to blame it on the dog. Oh, she got her nose broken. She said that I hit her. And I punched her in the face and it broke her nose. But actually it was nail polish blood. And she says, you know what? I'm not hitting you. Be a man. I didn't punch you. I didn't punch you, I hit you. Be a man, man up to it. You can't take a hit. And all this stuff is kind of crazy, right? So these are three various types of psychological tactics that people use to manipulate you and make you feel like you're the bad person and they are the victim. And I'm gonna break these down to you today so you can learn how to avoid them in your own life. If you're somebody who's empathetic, means you have a nice, kind heart and a kind soul, or if you're an introvert, you are extra susceptible to these dark, psychological evil tactics from hell if you're not aware that's happening to you. If you're that kind of person, right? So we'll go through them here. The first one, number one, is passive aggressiveness. This is where I believe that uh, Johnny Depp said in a testimonial that his partner went and shat on the bed, on his side of the bed, no doubt. And he said, oh, well, uh, it, it wasn't uh, dog poop because I'm familiar with my dog's poop, all right? So what is this? This is somebody who's angry at you doesn't show you, holds on to it, holds on to it, and does something to make your life miserable on the back end, passive aggressively without telling you. That's a huge red flag. One situation I had, okay, I can remember this. I had a, somebody I was seeing, it's like several years ago. They were in Miami, I flew them out to LA, got them a ticket, uh, treated them well, spent, took them a nice dinner, made breakfast, asked them what kind of deleterious restrictions they had. This is the best that I could as a human being. And then they were just like, out of nowhere, cause fights about the smallest things that didn't even matter. Why would that even come up? Why would that even be a factor? It's because of passive aggressiveness. And now I should have caught it earlier because I saw those signs with other people. I was like, ah, it's not gonna happen to me. That's somebody else. It's not gonna happen to me. But guess what? It will eventually happen to you. It'll be your turn. The second sign is guilt. 
making you feel bad for trying to be your best human being, you're trying to be your best self. I'll give you an example. In the situation, in the testimony, it is said that uh, Amber Heard had a nosebleed of some kind because uh, there was a fight, there was a domestic dispute. Now, there actually was no domestic dispute and there was no hit. And what happened was she went to the bedroom and then put nail polish on a Kleenex and came out and pretended that her nose was bleeding. All right? So there's huge guilt. That is somebody playing the victim so that you feel bad as a human being. They play the victim on you so you feel bad. So you're like, what else can I do to make it okay? Just tell me what I gotta do. Tell me how I can love you more. Tell me how I can correct things. What do I gotta do? Just, just tell me, let me know. Do I gotta hold a boom box outside your window? Do I gotta write you a love song? Do I gotta, do I gotta, do, do I buy you 20 roses? What is it? What I gotta do? I gotta buy you a car? Let me know. And they keep hitting you and hitting you and hitting you and hitting you and hitting you over and over and over again because they're trying to make you feel guilty. Because they know you're a nice person deep down. And the nicer you are, the more introverted you are, the more empathetic you are, they can keep hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting that nice button until they get more and more and more out of you. Because they need you. You're like a yin and a yang. You're the light and they're the darkness. And you need both of them to survive. The more they keep hitting you and hitting you and hitting you, the more you go, how do I love you more? How do I love you more? How do I love you more? How do I make this better? Right? This goes back to your probably issues. I know I had the issue of, I was raised by a very loving mother, Christian woman, lots of love in her heart, told me just always be nice to people. That's how you solve things, through love. But some things can't be solved through love. You can't help people that don't want to be helped. You can't solve things people that don't want to solve things, okay? But some people are out there, I'm not saying a lot of people, this can be males or females or things in the animal kingdom, 5% are just pure narcissists and they will ride you to the end. They will ride you to the end of your life and squeeze every last drip of juice and blood out of your soul and they won't be happy until that's done. The third point right here is going to be gaslighting and what that means is that somebody makes you think that you is a loco, that just birds flying around your head that make you think that you're crazy because of something that they actually did, okay? How does that even work? Well, here's the example. In a testimony, it's revealed through a voice message that Amber Heard says, I didn't punch you, I just hit you. I just hit you, I didn't punch you. What's wrong? Aren't you a man? Aren't you, can't you take a little hit? What's wrong with you? Why can't you take a little hit? What's wrong with you? Oh, it's just a hit. Right? Makes you think you like feel like you're less of a person for not being able to take a hit. Like you're inferior for not being able to take a hit. Which is crazy, right? Like in reality of the law, we're just talking purely the law here. Any physical contact that is violent against somebody that they don't want is considered assault. So it's like it directs it from assault to you just can't take a hit because you're not strong enough. Wow. What a made it way to make you think you're crazy, right? You might have seen this in your own life. Somebody make, somebody's actually cheating on you and they make you think that you're insecure for all the doubts that you have, like why are they being so weird about me, around me, but they're actually cheating on you and it makes you think that you're crazy. How about that? I'll give you a personal story here. About 10 years ago, so it's 2022 right now as we filmed this, about 10 years ago, it was 2010, uh, 12, I was dating somebody and the person I was dating ha had a lot of issues, a lot of red flags and I didn't see it at the time. They are actually bipolar as well. And this person had a lot of money. They claimed to be a millionaire. And I was like, well, we're gonna have a great time together. So I'm like, you know what? I like this person. They seem to be wanting me to take me on trips to Hawaii. Let's go, let's do this, all right? So I invested in time with this person, traveled with them. This person actually like, would abuse that power. There'd be situations where I couldn't eat because I was with them. There'd be situations where they were like, um, I was stuck in a hotel, basically, like, like as a slave to them, you know? And lo and behold, we got back to Canada end of the situation and because I did not want to go see them they went and then said to the police oh you're being aggressive and I'm gonna hit you up with some claims of like aggression and assault this is absolutely crazy this is, they actually text this to me so then of course I had to go to the police afterwards and the police were like yeah listen we got to arrest you it's a little bit of a problem this person made this claim against you and blah 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 I'm like listen that's fine but I have all the results to prove it. Let me show you the results. Let me show you the text messages. So I showed them the text messages that exact same day and everything was dropped instantly. Actually, I had the person say to my phone, this crazy person in my phone, all right? That was, that was the name of them. And they just laughed 
and they saw the back and forth about me and the person and they dropped everything. Now what happened to that person? Absolutely nothing. Nothing happened to that person. They made an accusation that wasn't true and they got off scot-free. Hands clean. Clean as a whistle. And then what happened with me? Well, I had this smudge of an arrest on a record. Even though it's dropped, if I ever get stopped by the police somewhere, just hanging out, smudge on the record. And let me tell you, no bullshit, it's a little bit worse as a black guy to have that. Sometimes, okay? So, what am I saying here? My point is, there's no equal repercussion for the person that makes false claims, for the person that gaslights you, for the person that takes advantage of you by being the victim, for the person that may say there is a physical altercation that doesn't happen. There is no repercussion for them legally that is equal to what happens to you. So, this might be the number one, if not the second most important decision that you ever make in your, your entire life. Your entire life. Who you surround yourself socially, who you surround yourself with as friends, who you let into your life as a romantic partner can either be the best decision or the worst decision. It doesn't matter how high you are on your success totem pole. Choose wisely, my friend. I'm telling you this because I love you. Choose wisely. So this is something that haunted me for many years, as I mentioned, since 2012, it's haunted me. From that moment on, I spent 10 years of my life just thinking about this and how to avoid the situations. And I'm not perfect about it. Sometimes there's flags that I miss. I catch 95% of them, but sometimes out of the goodness of my heart, being an empathetic person, being an introvert, I wish the best of people and I want to give them a chance. But you need the tools to be able to screen those people out and you need the tools to be able to select somebody in your life that is appropriate to be there. So where do you start? If you're in a situation right now with somebody who may be using dark psychological tactics on you, or how do you get out of it? And where do you start if you want to just avoid somebody like that and find the right person? Well, I made a digital program about this a while ago. I won't get into the details, but it's all about becoming a 10 on 10 person internally and then having the skills to find some people in your life that are 10 on 10s in your social world. So there's a link for that, okay, in the Madison 91 bundle, the Madison 91 bundle, okay? It's called the Legacy Package. Click the link for that. I won't put it on the screen, but it'll be down below in the description and you can check out that digital program. It's 91% off. Now, if that's not the option for you, and you're like, I gotta get something deeper going. I gotta work with you face to face. I got a whole list of boot camps that are coming up. Playa del Carmen. We got Mexico, uh, which is in Mexico. We got um, Medellin, Colombia, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal. We got uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, bro. We got an immersion happening in Budapest. We got uh, Australia, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Brisbane. We got a whole bunch of stuff, okay? So I'll put a link for that right now here. No matter where you are in the world, it's my final world tour, so fly out. I don't care where you are in the world, fly out. Spend 100 bucks, do it. It's the best decision you will ever make because if you don't use decision, you will be repeating the same mistakes over and over again. There'll be a huge mistake in your life, all right? So click those links down below. Fill out the quick questionnaires, a few questions, very easy. Let's see where we're, where we're coming from. And comment in this video, bro. Comment in the video and let me know what you're dealing with. If you met people like this in your life, if you're dealing with the situation right now, I wanna talk to you. For the first 24 hours of every video, I answer questions. And if you wanna go deeper down the rabbit hole about that Will Smith situation, all right, I got a video up here, click it. It's gonna tell you everything you need to know to not get stuck. And also, if you wanna enhance yourself as a 10 on 10 person and deepen your quality so you can avoid situations like that, I got a video place up here. It will further go on what we're talking about and it will expand and complete the information in this video. Click that now and I'll see you in a minute.